Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting game of Bigger Bible Books! The fun and exciting game where you, the audience, must quickly decide by looking at two books of the Bible which book you think is bigger. That is, which book has the most chapters. When you think you know the answer, shout out the name of the book and hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you are still standing after all eight questions, you will have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion. Everybody, on your feet. It's time to play Bigger Bible Books. Which book is bigger, Psalms or Jude? Time's up! Psalms is the bigger book with 150 chapters. Jude has only one. Now, which book is bigger, Matthew or Joel? Time's up! Matthew is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Joel has only three. Which of these books is bigger? First Samuel or First John? Time's up! First Samuel is bigger because it has 31 chapters. First John has only five. Nice job if you got all three of those right. Now, which of these books is bigger? Obadiah or Genesis? Time's up! Genesis is the bigger book with 50 chapters. Obadiah has only one. Which of these books do you think is bigger? Ruth or Proverbs? Time's up! Proverbs is bigger because it has 31 chapters. Ruth has only four. Excellent work if you're still standing. You really know your books of the Bible. Now, which of these books is bigger? Acts or Third John? Time's up! Acts is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Third John has only one. These last two questions are going to get a little tougher now. Which of these books is bigger? Luke or Esther? Time's up! Luke is the bigger book with 24 chapters. Esther has only 10. Final question! Which of these two books do you think is bigger? Second Samuel or Job? Time's up! Job is bigger because it has 42 chapters. Second Samuel has only 24. Congratulations! If you got all eight questions right, that is very impressive. You have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion! Thanks for playing, everyone!
Welcome to Canaan Land Kids for Christ. I am Sister Walona, and I am excited to be back here with all of you. Today's lesson, we will be talking about God's covenant with us. But before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for who you are, what you've done, and what you have yet to do in our lives. Lord, I thank you for the children who are watching and listening to this lesson. Let this word reach every child and let this word build upon the scriptures and the lessons that we teach each week. Father, I ask that you speak through my lips and that the message is delivered just as the kids need to be, just as the children need to hear it. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for bringing us together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls. So again, I said we will be talking about God's covenant with us. So who can remember from our previous lessons what a covenant is? Who remembers what is a covenant? Now, if you don't remember, that's okay. You know, we're all here to learn. We're here to study God's word so we can grow and grow in our relationship with him. So if you don't remember, what a covenant is, that's okay. A covenant is a legal contract. Like when a, when a person buys a home or doctors or lawyers, they sign legal contracts. Those are binding contracts, right? They're serious, but a covenant is even more serious than that. It's a serious promise that is made between two people or at least two people. Now God's covenant with us it is never broken. So a, coven a covenant should never be broken. God's covenant with us is never broken because he never lies. And that brings us to our power verse. Our power verse comes to us from Genesis 17, verse 7. So I'll read it first, and then I'll ask that you 
read it with me, okay? All right. So Genesis 17, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. I'll read it one more time. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. All right, boys and girls, so go ahead and read it with me. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. All right, so in this scripture, in this verse, who are we referring to when we say my and me? Who is the my covenant or what is the my covenant? Who is the between me and you? We are talking about God. So when we say my covenant, it's God's covenant. When we say between me and you, we're referring to God and us. Well, the you in here is Abraham. So it's Abraham we're referring to. So when we say you, we're talking about Abraham because this is a covenant that he made with Abraham. But we are Abraham's descendants. So descendants are those who came after Abraham. So we're all Abraham's descendants. We're all heirs of God and spiritually. So we're all heirs of God. We're all descendants of Abraham spiritually. Okay. And this is all because of the covenant that God made with Abraham, that we would be blessed because of the covenant that he made with Abraham. Now, in the past, they used, in the Bible, they used to use um, goats and bulls to make blood covenants. They would take the blood of the goats and the bulls and they would make a blood covenant. But because Jesus came and he died for us, he shed his blood, we don't have to shed, take the blood of the bulls and the goats um, to make blood covenants because Jesus' blood was shed. So that was the covenant, that was the blood that God used to seal his covenants with us. And there are many covenants from the Bible that he has with us, okay? So remember that a covenant can never be broken. God's covenant with us can never be broken because God never lies. It is because of the blood of Jesus that God was able to make these covenants with us. Remember that. So our sins are washed clean because Jesus said blood on the cross. So remember, when, whenever you sin, if you sin and you repent, you ask God for forgiveness and your sins are washed away. Right? So remember that. I can repent. I can ask God to forgive me. My sin is washed away. So we no longer want to hold on to that memory of that sin because God cleansed us of it. So the moment that you ask God into your hearts and you believe Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and you believe that Jesus is our Savior, our Lord and Savior, your sins are washed away and you are made clean. Okay. So the scripture says in Hebrews 8, verse 10, that God takes our hearts and makes it so that we have a heart that is soft and ready to serve him. So from the time that you accept God into your heart and you believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior and you start studying your word and you're building your relationship with him, God takes your heart and he starts to mold it so that you can be of service to him. So you can go out into the world that we live in and service him. Okay. Now, as I said before, there are many, there are many, many, many covenants that God made in the Bible with us. Over 500 promises have been made in the Bible, and these are all promises that God made with us. So just to give you an idea of what some of those promises are, he will never leave us nor forsake us. He heals us. He makes us strong when we are weak. He lifts us up when we are sad and discouraged. He meets all of our needs, and he renews our strength. And these are just a few of the covenants, the promises that God made with us. 
So we want to remember that as we grow in his word and we study the word and we get older and we start serving God. We want to remember those promises that he made with us. So know that God's covenant with us is forever. Remember, it cannot be broken. God doesn't lie. And whatever belongs to him belongs to us. All right, boys and girls. So God's covenants tell us that he wants us to have a great life. He wants us to be happy and filled with the Holy Spirit and doing great things in the world that we live in. And he wants us to... Um, as I said, continue to build on his word. He wants us to go out into the world and be great stewards, be, um, be great servers of God. And all of this is from the moment that you accept Christ into your heart. So the moment that you give God your yes and you say you want to come into the kingdom, you receive all of the covenants, all of the promises that the Bible says belong to us, that he has made with us. Because what did we say? God never lies. So all of his promises, all of the covenants that he has made in the Bible, that he made with Abraham, are ours. Now, if you are ready to welcome God into your life and believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then what I want you to do is go ahead and raise your right hand and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I love you. Come into my heart today. I have sinned against you. I repent of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me with your blood and make me clean. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, boys and girls. So if you said that prayer, if you repeated that prayer after me, I just want to congratulate you. I want to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. We are excited here at Canaan Land Kids for Christ that you made the decision for yourself to want to grow in God's word and get to know him for yourself. So each week we give you scripture, a scripture to build on so that you can study it, so that you can uh, build, it, build up your word. Now what you want to do, whether this is the first time that you're, um, that you're listening, is whether this is the first lesson that you've heard or this is one of many lessons that you heard, you want to continue to study God's word. You want to, that helps with you growing in his word and growing in your relationship with you. So you want to study his word. What do you mean by that? You want to read it, write it, say it. So remember, you want to read it, write it, say it. So what do we want you to do? We want you to read it, write it, say it. All right? So before we get ready to go, I want you to say the power verse with me one more time. Okay, so it comes from Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. And it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and, you and your descendants after you. All right, boys and girls, so great job. I know that you guys uh, were taking notes and you have some good things to share with your parents um, or your friends about the word that we've listed that, that you got today. So what I want you to do, again, study your power verse. Read it, write it, say it, okay? And remember that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you here next week. Bye. So